Hello, Steve White Trick Boy 89 for Steve House 89. I was just doing a couple of videos about Star Trek and about um, all the rumors about Kirsten and Emma Watson. I was just thinking, how the hell did Kirsten even get into that position? I sort of remembered, I mean, I, I know. But I just sort of wanted to do a little reminder to people. How did Kurtzman end up in this position? Well, Kurtzman was brought on to Star Trek as part of a team, a writing team. It was Robert Orkey and Alex Kurtzman. Now, Alex Kurtzman was the non-Star Trek fan, the Star Wars fan, the guy who didn't like Star Trek, didn't know Star Trek. He was supposed to be the everyman. Um, and Orkey was the Star Trek fan who knew everything about Star Trek. And the idea was the two of them would create a Star Trek that was more, um, uh, more that, that, that non-Star Trek fans could um, understand or get into. Or basically, the idea was they they had the idea in their head that there was something wrong with Star Trek. Star Trek was broken, and they had to um, fix it. And they had to make it appeal to the masses, basically, so they get more money than just um, appealing to the Star Trek fans, which kind of backfired, because the Star Trek fans actually spend money on Star Trek. There's less of them, but they spend a lot of money. Um, the, the general fans, um, there may be legion of them, but they don't actually spend any money on Star Trek. They don't buy the calendars, they don't buy the toys, they don't, um, they don't do anything. They, they, just, they watch the show once. Like I have friends who are Star Trek fans who've watched Discovery and Picard, they watch it once, and then they go on to the next series on Netflix, and they forget about it. That's it. It doesn't affect their life, because it doesn't have any impact, because it doesn't say or do anything. Like the original Star Trek had optimism and um, humanism and ideas and concepts and actually made you want to be in that universe. The new Star Trek doesn't do that. Now, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, Orky, he seemed to sort of be... Um, Kind of overridden a bit, I, I think, because uh, there were he, there were more non-Star Trek fans in the mix than Star Trek fans. He was sort of the lone holdout, and unfortunately, he's a bit of he was a bit too real. And he was on Trek Movie, and I just happened to be in um, the comments the night that um, people were attacking him for the film, which of course wasn't all his fault. And he blew up and basically told Star Trek fans to f off or get effed. Um, and he got in a bit of trouble for that, but also they, they acted like they fired him for that. I don't think they really care about the fans and him offending the fans or attacking the fans and insulting us. Um, because <laughs> he technically told me to F off as well as all the other people in the thread. Um, I don't hold any grudge, <laughs> understand. But, um, I mean, he worked on the second film as well. Um... But I think Kurtzman, again, got um, more of his idea and his agendas into it, which is why it wasn't so good. And all he was trying to do, I think he was trying to get a real, a more original story, and they didn't do it. And then the third film, he actually apparently wrote a really great Star Trek film. But when the idiot suits, um, who don't know what Star Trek is and don't understand why, why, why the fans like it, or just, like I said, they're trying to make it appeal to the masses, so they get the Marvel audience, which they're never going to get. They fired him because it was too Star Trekky. So they had these two people who were supposed to balance each other out. They fire the one that actually knows about Star Trek, and they keep the one who doesn't know about Star Trek, who hates Star Trek, who didn't watch Star Trek, who likes, um, who he probably didn't doesn't even like Star Wars, but he was more familiar with Star Wars. They keep him in and give him the keys of the castle, basically. And he doesn't have any ideas. He doesn't know what Star Trek is. He doesn't have any concepts. He doesn't have all he does is have a platform he wants to preach from with an agenda, a whole bunch of them. Now, some of them are very pro-left, um, and as I'm a gay man who understands the importance of political correctness, diversity, um, representation, I should be supporting him because he's sort of um, supporting my side of the street on, on some level, but he's not doing it because he actually believes in any of the issues. They're just trying to virtue signal and get credit for it. And all it does, because it's so ham-fisted, all it does is actually hurt the cause and make people look worse. So, because it's so belligerent and obvious. So yeah, that's how we got in that position. And that's 
the situation because this guy doesn't know what Star Trek is. He doesn't like Star Trek. They want to change Star Trek. They don't want Star Trek to be what it was. They want it to be something else, which they think will make them a lot of money. And that's all they care about. Um, so I just want to remind people, he's not there because he knew anything about Star Trek. He's not there because he was greatly talented. He was brought in as part of a group, and he was part of a team where he was supposed to be balancing. Because apparently having someone just knowing about Star Trek and writing about Star Trek was problematic. They had to have someone to balance his experience and his knowledge with their lack of experience and knowledge of Star Trek. And then that's the person they gave the keys to. Not the person who actually had a clue. He apparently wrote a great story, which hopefully we'll see as a novel or something one day, but probably not. Um, apparently wrote a great story, um, a third sort of story, sort of ending. I, I don't know if it made a trilogy out of the films or if it just sort of really it was supposed to have brought together a lot of elements. And I remember being impressed by what I heard at the time, but now... What was that? About eight, six, eight years ago? When I, was, when I was just starting with the concepts for that film. Because it was after Into Darkness, which was 2000 and I think 13. Yeah, 2009, 2012 or 13. So it was around 2014, 14, I think they were talking about the next film. I don't know. But, I don't know, I just... I, I, enough people don't point out the fact that Orky, um was originally the Star Trek person. He was fired and Kurtzman ended up there by accident. He really has no place being there. He has no love of Star Trek, no experience. Um, and he's just awful. I mean, he killed the um, he killed the Mummy Returns or whatever it was called. Um, he just gave the film to Tom Cruise just to bend the knee to him. Oh, I hate to use that expression because that's um, an anti-Black Lives Matter sort of idea, but that's what he did, um, and gave, just gave the film to Tom Cruise and killed the Universal Dark Universe plan. He killed the Spider-Man plan thing that they were doing with the new um, Spider-Man. Just everything he touches is ruined because he doesn't know what he's doing and he's awful. Um, and he can only just tell the same plain um, basic revenge story because he thinks everyone can understand that. And that, he's a one-trick pony, basically. Um, and he shouldn't be in the position he's in, and God, I just want him out. And when when Moonves was um, kicked out of, or well, fired, um, or had to leave CBS because of the accusations of um, sexual abuse and rape, um, I literally was dancing. I was literally dancing all over this floor um, for about an hour or two, just, just when I was reading all the articles, and I was just so happy he was gone. Um, and I danced a little bit when um, they merged uh, CBS and Paramount again. Um, and when Kurtzman is eventually gone and um, Secret Hideout is gone and, they've, and they're just... They should just produce Star Trek themselves. Paramount needs to just take it over again, go back to the good old days, um, get some new blood in to make sure it's not exactly like the good old days, and just, just, you know, just give us Star Trek again and make some money out of it. I miss it. I miss it so much. I mean, I was spoiled. I basically had Star Trek my whole life. I grew up with reruns of the original Star Trek, um, and Next Gen took a long time to get to us. I saw the videos long before I saw it on TV, and then I watched that, and we had it every week, and we had the repeated original series and the repeated Next Gen and Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and then Enterprise, which I watched every week um, until I got the DVDs, and I watched the last season, the last few episodes of the last season before we actually got it on TV. But then I watched those episodes just so I can say I watched the last episode of Star Trek, not knowing it was going to be the last episode of Star Trek like for, for like 15 years, which is what we're at now, 15 years since there's been Star Trek produced. After 17 or 18 years in a row of it being produced, it's fucking painful. <laughs> but um, I'm going to go back to sorting out my toys. Um using the uh, whole coronavirus as an opportunity to pull all my collectibles out of storage and work out what I have, what I'm missing, what's broken, what needs to be replaced. It's going to take days. My place looks like the end of Indiana Jones. But I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Oh, God. I just want this era to end. Bye.